Hey, greetings everyone. It's Pastor Tony. Uh, thank you for tuning in again today. We're in Luke chapter 8 and for the last three weeks we've been talking about the parable of the sword. And one of the reasons I'm so passionate about this parable is because Jesus said in Mark's version of it, you can find it in Mark chapter 4, he says this, if you don't understand this parable, how are you going to understand the rest of them? You know, everything hangs on this here. So it talks about how the Word of God is being sown and uh, when I say sown, I mean it's, 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 it's being placed into our hearts. Now, he describes four types of hearts. And the first one, he says, these are people that don't understand it. They don't get it. And so the enemy comes in and snatches it. Ground number two, he talks about rocks or stones or issues, really. It can be fears. It can be bitterness, unforgiveness, uh, doubt, all those things. And so the word of God is sown in, because, but we hold on to those stones uh, the stones of bitterness and unforgiveness, then the word of God cannot take root. Ground number three, uh, which he explained here, is when the word of God is sown, but we have so the cares of this world, uh, the distractions, and we're, we're trying to be rich and trying to get ahead and prove ourselves and, and, all, and achieve and all of those things. Now, I'm a very proactive guy. I move at 100 miles an hour. I'm wired like that. But at the end of the day, I have to learn to stay within my lane, run my race, not compare to myself or anyone else, and still make sure I have time to get into the Word of God and allow the Word, to, Word of God to get into me. It has to become a priority. It has to supersede everything else. It has to be your number one priority. And then there's ground number four. And it says here, I'm in Luke chapter 8, verse 15. And it says, but the ones that fell on the good ground are those who having heard the word. Remember, you got to hear the word. You got to hear it. But it says here, those that hear it and keep it. So I love Luke's version. It says you got to hear and keep it. Well, in um, Mark's version, it says you got to be able to receive it. You got to receive it. You know, those that hear and receive it. Matthew's version says these are those that hear it and understand it. So I purpose to receive it understand it and keep it. You say, but Pastor Tony, is that good exegesis? I don't know. It's just what I do, okay? When I say exegesis, it means it's good study of the Word of God, pulling out of the Scriptures. When I look at all three, when this parable is told, and you know Jesus would tell this multiple times, what, 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 where it bears fruit for me, I mean, what I get out of it, okay, is that I need to accept it. And sometimes accepting the Word of God can be difficult because it's contrary to what my preference is, okay? And that's what I got to manage, okay? That tension between my preference and what the Word of God says. The other thing I have to do is that I have to understand it. And understanding requires, it requires time. It requires meditation. It requires diligence and intentionality, okay? That's what understanding does. And then the next thing I do, I have to keep it. I have to keep it. In order to keep it, because um, I heard someone say that we're like, um, oh, help me, Lord, uh, that we leak. OK, so the word of God goes in us and then we leak. OK, and so I'm constantly having to replenish myself, replenish myself. And kind of one of the ways it leaks is sometimes I forget things. And so as I'm constantly immersing myself in that, then I'm becoming more of, of, uh, of the word of God. I'm becoming more wordly, if, you, if, if, if that makes sense, more wordly, not worldly, wordly. You know, if I wanted to learn Spanish, the best thing I can do is just go move to Mexico City, you know, or somewhere Spanish speaking, just move Colombia, you know, Bogota, just go and move there and immerse myself. It's the same thing with the Word of God. And so then the Word of God, it becomes the basis on how I do life. You know, uh, I've talked to people recently and they live from a, um, their, 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 their life is more based on their pain. You know, some People like I try for myself, I try to make my life based on my purpose and it's based on the word of God and what God's intention for me is. So that's what I really want to get from the word, from the parable of the sower. You know, actually my church is based on the parable of the sower. You say, well, what do you mean? My wife and I really are intentional about helping people understand. We also, that's ground number one. Ground number two, we address that by having classes and workshops to where we, and uh, even, even getaways, you know, weekend getaways and retreats where we go in and try to really get to the root of what people's problems is, you know, what, what the problem is. Um, Jesus said this, and we're going to get to this later. It says in Luke 18, he says, you got to say to the sycamine tree, be plucked up by the root and be cast into the sea. And the thing about the sycamine tree, and I'm, I'm talking about ground number two now, is that uh, the sycamine tree, when Jesus used that, and don't confuse it with the sycamore tree, when Zac Zacchaeus ran ahead of Jesus and climbed the sycamore tree, this is a sycamine. And if you read it in like a New England, New International Version Bible, a New Living Translation, uh, ESV, and it, it will say mulberry. Now, the sycamine tree is a type of mulberry tree, okay? So it is a mulberry, but it's a specific one. Now, this is what, what I believe Jesus was saying, because when you study the characteristics of a sycamine tree, 
a sycamine tree, and the disciples would have understood this, that a sycamine tree is when um, is what, the, what the, the wood they would use from a sycamine tree is what they would use to build coffins. It also produces a fruit that's very bitter. The roots in a sycamine tree go deep, deep, deep down, 30, 40, 50 feet down into the earth to find water. So Jesus said, you know, people with, with heart issues, you got to tell it be plucked up by the root. You got to get rid of it altogether. Otherwise, it's going to kill you. It's going to bury you. You know, studies have shown that 80 to 90 percent of all diseases come from stress. And stress really is an absence of information or, or just a source of, of um, offense. And so I've learned not to worry and carry all those cares because then my body begins to think. And then as I think, uh, though it, it, alt it can literally alter my DNA, my chromosomes. It's amazing when you really study neuroscience, okay, and, and neurology. And you, you will see that um, what, what will happen to our body. So ground number two, it, it, it's, it's really dangerous. So I want to be a ground number four kind of person, a ground number four Christian. So I really have to do my best to understand the word of God, understand the word of God, and then do my best to keep it. So that's before I immerse myself in it. But let's move on to verse 16, Luke chapter 8, verse 16. And this is still Jesus speaking. Now he gives another um, a parable about light. He says here, verse 16, no one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed, but he sets it on a lamp stand that those who enter may see the light. It just makes sense. So you don't want to get the word of God and try to hide it. Verse 17 says this, for nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. You know, I've heard comedians make fun of that, and sometimes people talk about that. One of the things I purpose to do, I know this day and age we live in, you know, I, I will Google something, you know, looking up something, some uh, something I want to buy. You know, we had a trip to Israel recently, and I was looking for the headsets. You know, for uh, the tour guide, would, you know, he was speaking to, and all the 50 participants on the team would be able to hear him. And then all of a sudden on my Facebook feed, guess what kept showing up? These headsets. You know, people are upset about that. I understand that. You know, we got cameras everywhere now. And people like Big Brother is watching and, uh, and people are bothered. Well, it doesn't bother me. I've just decided I'm going to live a righteous and holy life. You can follow me anywhere you want. I'm just going to live righteous and holy. Nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be worried about. So verse 17, there, there's nothing I need to worry about being revealed. Okay. Now, verse 18 is really where I wanted to get today, okay? It says this, therefore, take heed how you hear. Pay attention to how you hear. Because, see, the thing is we hear with filters, but you don't know what filter you're hearing through. And then you hear something, it'll go in, and it won't be what's been communicated, okay? Because you're going to hear with that filter. That's how people get so easily offended. Remember once I told a lady, I said, hey, because we know how you are. Oh, she got hot. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? And I said, how the word of the spirit of God moves to you and you're so prophetic. Oh, why does she immediately default to thinking I'm saying something mean to her? <laughs> you think about it for a minute. And if she did it to me, she's probably doing it out there. You do that kind of stuff in a workplace. After a while, people are sick of you. They, you're not adding value to the team. You're, you're being a pain. You, you know, you're dragging everything down. Everybody has to cater to you. You know, you're no longer an asset. You're a liability. You know, you're not helping move the organization forward. You're like an anchor. You're keeping it from going, I mean, from moving, from progressing. And you have to pay attention to how you hear. Let me keep reading. For whoever has, to him more will be given. I want the more, okay? And whoever does not have, even what he seems to have will be taken from him. And it's all based on how you're hearing. I pay attention to how I hear. Do I have a filter on? When someone says something and it just it invokes something in me and I rise up a little bit, I have to ask myself, what is that rooted in? For a long time, when I walked in unforgiveness towards my father for his abuse and some things like that, boy, you know, everything was bugging me. Everybody was getting on my nerves, you know, and especially if you were a male authority figure, you know, because in my mind, I made this personal agreement, what I call a personal covenant, that no one will ever punk me again. And here are people trying to bless me and add value to me. And because I got this, this, this filter, I'm not hearing clearly. There have been men in my life right now that have been so amazing. They, they've been there to care for me. They've shown me things. They've taught me things. They've coached me. They've encouraged me. They've helped me. And I just had to really develop ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. My prayer is that you have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I'll see you next week.